forgot when we met on Wednesday. If a question, I, I don't have all the information. We're just going to skip those questions and then I will look at previous years um, assignments as well to see if we can find uh, more exercises to do relating to the same concept. But let's continue. The first question, which one of the following statement is incorrect with regards to normal probability distribution? So it means you need to know your properties of this normal distribution, right? So, and we're looking for the incorrect statement. So A, the normal distribution has the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. Is that correct or incorrect? You can go through each one, state each statement. Mm -hmm. Correct. That is correct. The area to the right of the mean of a normal distribution is one, and the area to the left of the mean of a standard normal distribution is one. Think about it. We just said it that the mean is, is zero. Think of the area as the probability. So if you think about the normal probability, and in the middle here, it cuts off at the mean of zero. And what do we know about the probability, which are the area underneath the probability? What is the sum of all probabilities should be equals to? One. Should be equals to one. So we know that the sum of all probabilities equals to one. Therefore, if I split this graph, which has the probabilities underneath here, if I split it into um, half, therefore, on the left, what will be the percentage on the left? And on the right, what will be the percentage of those probabilities? Is it one or is it half of it? That's what this question is asking you. The area to the right of the mean, which is the area, this area to the right, they say it's equals to one, and the area to the left is equals to one. Can it be true? No ways. No, I think, um, no, it's not. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, then all equals to one. Yes, so therefore it means the incorrect statement in terms of that is B. If we look at number C, it says the score of the mean of a normal distribution uh, will be zero. We just spoke about it because if it does that score with mean of this with the mean distributed, normally distributed, it will have the mean of zero. And that will be correct. And we know that 95% of the empirical uh, rule. It's the same as a two standard deviation because 68% is one standard deviation, 98% is two standard deviation, and 99% is one standard, uh, three standard deviation. The smaller the value of the standard deviation, the narrower. So we know that the smaller the standard deviation, which is the gap between the uh, the mean and the outer edge of your normal, your Kelly, your normal belly curve. Um, the narrower or the smaller the standard deviation, it means the narrower the uh, the belly curve will be, and the larger your standard deviation, the flatter your belly curve will be. So those are the things that you need to always remember and know. Moving to question two. I don't know what question two is looking for the incorrect statement or the correct statement, but we can go through question two and we can do all the statement. Do you still remember how to answer questions like this? Uh, so if I go to 
we're looking for the correct answer. So I've already peeped on what we are looking for. So if we need to choose which one is the correct answer, therefore it means you need to evaluate each and every statement. So with number A, what do we do? How do we answer A? Nobody knows. Remember, because it's the probability of between, you're going to go to the table and look for the probability of the second one, which is the probability of 0, 0, 0, minus the probability of the first one, which is Z of less than minus 1.90. So it means you go to the table, you will need to go to the table and look for the probability inside the table and subtract each one of them. <clears throat> so we're looking for zero. The first one is zero and zero, which is zero comma five hundred. So you're just going to say zero comma five. Thousand minus and we go to one comma nine zero on the negative side and look for one comma nine and then go to the top and look for seven. Sorry, it's one comma nine zero. Why am I looking for seven? One comma nine zero, which is zero comma zero two eight seven. 0, 0, 0,0287 and you subtract one from the other. We might be looking for the incorrect answer, but anyway, that's how you will answer the question. I don't know which one was the where this question statement was looking for. So is that 0, 0,4713? The first one is correct. So the first one is correct. Then do the second one. What is the second one? What is the is probability it? of Z one comma six on the table? Did you guys bring the tables? It's zero comma yes. eight five yes. five four. Zero comma eight five five four. And the probability of zero, uh, sorry, z of zero will be zero comma five zero 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 because we did find it previously. Uh, sorry, the um, the probability for one point six isn't it? That we it's gonna it's gonna be zero point nine four five two because it's positive. You're correct. Zero comma nine four five two. Yeah. 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 Is zero comma nine four five two, and the answer will be zero comma four four five two, right? That will be correct. Then do number number C. Uh, with number C, we do have all the values here in front of us as well. So it's zero comma nine. Four five two minus one point nine six one point nine minus one point nine. We did find it. It was zero comma zero two eight seven. And the answer is no. It's not. It's you must go See? double check on the table. And the negative side, it was 
zero comma zero two eight seven. Subtract one from the other. What do you get? Zero comma nine one six five. Zero comma nine one two. Is it two five? So six five. Six five. Six five. So this is the incorrect one. I'm just gonna make a cross on top of it. Uh, how do we answer D? What is the probability of Z greater than minus 1.9? Is it the same as 1 minus the probability of Z greater than 1.9? We need to validate that. So if we have the probability of a greater than, what do we do? We will say one minus the probability of the value we find on the table, right? So therefore, this left hand side will be one minus zero comma zero two eight seven. And what will be that value? Zero comma nine seven one three. Zero comma nine seven seven three. No, no zero comma nine seven one three. Zero comma seven one three. Huh? Perfect. Perfect. Then on the right hand side we have the value of one minus the probability of z greater than so therefore we need or oh, i don't even have to write it there i can write it here this is the same as one minus and we know that because it's a greater than we need to subtract one from the probability of z less than positive one comma nine so we need to go to the positive side of one comma nine so it will be one minus one minus again because it has to take care of what is inside there. So in the on the positive side you go to one comma nine and that is zero comma nine seven one three. Zero comma nine seven one three. And you say one minus zero comma nine seven one three will give you zero comma zero two eight seven and subtract that from one, it will give you the same as zero comma because it's double, it's doing the double the thing. So the left hand side is the same as your right hand side. But that is how you're going to validate your answers. The last one. So you go to the table and look for minus one comma six on the negative side, one comma six, which is zero comma zero five four eight. So here is zero comma zero five four eight. And on the left hand side, because it's greater than, you need to go and say one minus the value from the positive side the positive side of one comma nine six you go one comma six uh -uh, it's one comma six right is one comma six is zero comma nine yeah nine co zero comma nine four five two five two um, and what is the answer is it the same as zero comma five four four eight it will be so this is also correct. That's how you're going to validate the question. So actually this question was looking for which one is incorrect. Which is C. 
do you understand how we do these things? Especially normal probabilities. Is there yes. someone who's still unsure of how to find the probabilities? You must speak now. Okay, so let's go to the next question. I just wish they were giving us three hours in exam. <laughs> But remember, you're only going to get two questions from normal probabilities. You're not going to get more than that. So it's going to be as quick as possible. You just need to know okay. how to work them out. OK, given that Z is normally distributed or is normal distribution, or given that Z is a standard normal distribution, what is the value of small Z such that the area to the right of Z is 0, 0,7937. That is the probability that Z is greater than, and you must remember that Z is greater than small Z is equals to 0, 0,79. So how would they have found this value? Do you still remember? It's everything that we have done. How do we find the answers that we are looking for of 0, 0,0548? How do we find this value? Because they say the probability that Z is greater than a value, or let's call it the Z, is equals to 0, 0,0548. That's exactly what we're doing. We need to find this Z because we know that that Z is the positive 1.6 because they would have given us that. So now they didn't give you 1.16, but they want you to go find 1.16. How did we get 0, 0,0548? That is what this question is asking us to find. This is what they are asking. How do we find this value of 0, 0,058 in this regard? How do we find 0, 0,739? We would have found it by saying, we would have found it by saying 1 minus the Z value, right? That small Z value that we have, it would have given us 0, 0,7939. So now let's go find what this Z value is. We cannot go and find that Z value before we can make Z the subject of the formula here. So it will be 1 minus 0, 0,7939. And that is, what is that? 0, 0,2061. 0, 0,2061, right? So yes. now let's go look for this value on the table. 0, 0,2061 inside the table, inside here, so that we can go find the Z values. 0, 0,2, it won't be on the positive, it will be on the negative. 0, 0,26, 206, 206, There we go. Then we Minus go up. 0, 0,8, 3, there 2. We go out it's two at the top and 0, 0,8 so the answer is the small z would have been minus 0, 0,8 two which is this happiness are we good if the sign would have been the probability that Z is less than or equal to small Z of 0, 0,7939, then it would have been a different story because we would have taken this value because we know that they would have found it from the table, right? And we would have said this is the answer would be 0, 0,79. We come inside, we look for 0, 0,793171. Seven, 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 was it 39? And it would have been 0, 0,82. 
that's how you would have found it, right? If the sign would have been a less than. Always remember that if we need to find the probability of Z of a value, it is the table value. If we need to find the probability of Z greater than a value, it's always one minus the table value. If we need to find the probability of Z lying between two values, A and B, we always find the table value for B minus the table value for A. Always, always. This is very important, especially now with normal distribution and also sampling distribution. You always need to remember that. Everything you do to answer questions relating to normal distribution and sampling distribution, this should be your base of how you're going to handle the questions. Okay, so let's move to the next question. Okay, so because this one, I don't have the question at the top, we can skip. Get to question five. The Department of Basic Education found that the learners travel time from home to school at one of the remote schools is normally distributed with the mean of 114, which is the mean of 114, and the standard deviation, which is our sigma of 72 minutes. What is the probability that the student or the learner will travel from home to school between our X value is between 90 minutes and 150? So we want to calculate the probability that X which lies between 90 minutes and 150. So it means now we need to calculate the Z values. So we can from here find the probability that Z is less than, and we can start with the, this is the same as A and B. We start with the B, Z of X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation minus and probably instead of using X, I could have just used the actual value, which is 150. And you can do the same, the probability that Z is less than the second value, which is 90 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation and substitute the values into the formulas. So Z of less than 150 minus 114 divide by the standard deviation of 72 minus the probability that Z less than 90 minus 114 divide by 72. Do the calculation and give me the answers. Negative 0 0.3333. We need two decimal, negative 0 0.33, right? Yes. We only need to keep two decimal. And the next one, but it cannot be negative on this side. No, the, the, the negative is the other one. I'm sorry, Lizzie. I'm so sorry. Yeah, the other one. I did the other one, yeah, sorry. Negative 0 0.33 on this side and on the 150? It's 0 0.5. 0 0.50. Zero. Then go to the table, look for the positive 0 0.5. Table. I got uh, 0 0.6915. Zero comma six nine one five. Yes. Zero comma six nine one five. And then you go to the negative side table and look for zero comma three three. Zero point um 
0.3807. And subtract one from the other. Zero comma three two. I'm going to assume it's zero comma three two zero eight, right? Yeah, the answer is that. Yes. I also don't know what this other question would have asked in terms of this question. Probably you needed to calculate X because th then they are asking you uh, to uh, estimate this. They would have given you the probability, so you would have went to the table to look for the probability and then come and substitute that Z value into the formula. Uh, remember, uh, so that you can calculate your X, your X value for this question. So uh, based on half information, I cannot help with that one now at the moment, but we can look for the previous exam uh, assignment questions if you do have questions like this. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, this is one of those that we actually did a lot of explaining in, I think in the class we did it twice to explain the concept and then we also discussed it on WhatsApp. By now you should know how to answer this question. So, um, and there are multiple ways you can answer it. So anyway, let's get to it. Uh, the emotional intelligence quotient score of high school learners is normally distributed with a mean of 80 and the standard deviation of 20. If there were 2,969 learners with a score higher than 95, how many students took the test? So we need to know how many all of them have taken the test. We know how many have scored more than 95 but we don't know how many took the test so we need to find that <coughs> so if <coughs> if n is the number of how many took the test we know that y plus x where our y or our x or we can call it x plus y x plus y, x being those who scored higher than, higher than 95, and y will be those who scored less than or equals to 95, right? They should give us, but we are also told how many scored, you know, that 2, 9, 6, 9 have scored higher than 95, that we know. Uh, what else can we do? Let's see if you still remember. So we know all this other information. We also know the mean. So it means we can calculate the probability of those <clears throat> who scored uh, less than 95, right? We can calculate those ones because we don't know them. We don't know how many of them. What is the probability that learners uh, scored more than 95? Or we can calculate the probability of those who scored more than 95. So 
So how do we answer this? Let's go. Anyone? Nobody. So no one knows how to answer the question. Okay, let's take let's pick one. <coughs> uh, since we know that here we have the prob we can calculate the probability of higher than 95 because that's what we are given in the statement anyway. So let's calculate the probability of those who's got more than 95. Therefore, it means it's one minus the probability of Z less than 95 minus 80 divided by the standard deviation of 20. How many? One minus the probability of Z less than. Zero point seven five. Zero point seven five, and therefore let's go find that probability. One minus. Go to the positive side to find the probability. Zero point seven five. Zero I got uh, 0 0.7734. 0 0.7734. 0 0.7734. 1 minus 0 0.7734. 0, 2266. 0 2266. So we know that the probability of those who scored more than 95 is 23%, right? So it is 23%. Therefore, it means the Y will make up because if I know that the sum of all probabilities should be just equals to 100 plus those who scored less than 95, they will be. 77% of those ones, right? So if I need to know how many, what is the proportion of those ones based on the information that we have? I know that 23% makes up 200 and, uh, 2,969. What is my Y? which will give me my N of 100%. Yeah, I think we're gonna divide, um, we're gonna say N divided by the value of X to find Y. But you don't know your N, right? So how do I find my N if I don't have a Y? Uh, I do have my X and Y, right? I know my X is 292. Uh, I know that my, I know these two values. So if, let's call it this way, let's do mathematical function. If X is equals to 23%, what is my y equals to, right? That's what, or what, yes, something like that. But I know what my x, my x is two, nine, six, nine. And I know that this is zero comma two, three. I know that I'm looking for y 
and I know what this other value is, is 0 0.77. How do I find my y? You can just cross multiply y to times that. So, so this will be, uh, if I need to find my y, that will be y will be equals to 2969 multiplied by 0 0.77 divided by 0 0.23. Right, because this will multiply by that, but eventually I will have to divide by 0, 0,3. 2, 3. So calculate and tell me what is my y. 9,939. Wait, slowly. 9. 9,939. Point. 695. Can round off. Okay. Now this is this is my y and this is my x. So now in order for me to find n, we said n is x plus y, right? So if my x is two nine six nine and my y is nine nine. Three, um, because now we're talking about percent. A percent cannot be a decimal, right? Maybe I need to round it off to foot. So add them together. Um, twelve point six nine five. Okay, yeah, I'm because I've I've used the calculator without uh I didn't punch in uh, nine thousand nine hundred and forty. So I just used what was on my calculator. So it's twelve thousand. Wait, 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 wait. Two nine six nine multiply by point seven seven divide by Twelve thousand nine hundred and eight. That is the answer that you have. Yes. Yes. And it's none of these ones that we have here. Uh, there might be something wrong with our calculation, right? What is their answer? They've got thirteen one oh two. What is it that we did wrong? So we know see if I use the end the whole instead of rounding it off. So it's two nine. Six nine multiply by point seven seven three four divide that by point two two six six false. Okay, so because we round it off, we don't have to round it off. So use the full the full numbers as you see them instead of rounding them. Of it should give us the same answer. So, this is math space math one math one one. 
So 2,969 multiplied by 0, 0,7734 divided by 0, 0,2266 should give you 10,133. 10,133. So you add 10,133 to that. Uh, point three eight three zero oh four uh, add plus two nine six nine. No, Lizzie. It's actually more. The Y, it doesn't give me 10,133. It gives me less than that. It gives you? It gives me um, 8011.95. I don't know about the others. Okay. One, two. Should we do this correctly now? Uh, it's giving me 10,133.38. So uh, let's do it step by step and see. Um, I also got 10,000. So, but if someone is not getting it the same way, let's see. 2969 multiply that with 0.7734. Four equals, and that gives me two two nine six point two two four six. Divide the answer by point two two six six. Uh, and oh yeah, no sorry, Lizzie. Uh, because uh, I got I got uh, ten thousand one hundred thirty three point three eight. The thing is, uh, the number uh, uh, at the uh, I mean. The, the ones that we divided with, so I, I wrote the wrong ones because I couldn't see very well. Yeah, but okay. now I've got the right one, yeah. All right, so the answer yeah. here is 10, 133. Yes. 10, 133.3. 8. 8. 3, 8, 3, 0, 5, right? So then go and add, because we know that N is equals to X plus Y. So we have... X, we just calculated Y, so let's add them together. 29,000 plus 10, 133. That gives you? 13,102.38. So we get the yes. same answer, right? Yes. 9669. Nine. Equals thirteen one o two. There we go. So our mistake here was to round off. So we don't have to round off quickly. But yeah, there you get it. All right. So the answer is. Okay, this one we can also answer because it's not full question. So let's go to the next question, question nine. Now consider a normally distributed population with a mean of 190 and the standard deviation of 120. A sample of 50 is drawn from the population. What is the probability that the sample mean is 220 at most? Now, the other thing that I um, I think when we start looking at exam questions, um, we will have to touch on the key things to know when you what kind of a question you are answering because if you you know your study units question um, study unit six and study unit seven they are almost similar to one another. The only difference 
is in study unit seven, you start here in the question, what is the probability of the sample mean? Whereas in the previous one, they wouldn't mention the probability of a sample mean. They would have just said, what is the probability that the value will be between, right? So now you need to know that the minute in the question they ask you about the sample mean, sample proportion, you know that you're doing um, sampling distribution so that you know which formula to use. The previous question we were using Z of X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. The minute you come to study unit, this is in study unit six, right? In study unit seven, we're going to use the Z of X minus not x but the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n which is your sampling distribution uh, formula that we use so you will need to know when are you in study unit seven and when are you in study unit six so that you can use the right formula so with this question we are given the mean we are given the standard deviation but we are also given the sample size and so it means we're going to use Nessie, Z, yes are we allowed to have notes gosh um okay i'm going to ignore that question right now because this is a recorded session okay so uh um where am i Okay, so now <laughs> I don't even know how to address it. Sorry, I, me not being rude. Uh, maybe someone can send you a private message <laughs> on WhatsApp or something like that. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's answer the question. So we have Z is equals to, uh, and also we need to read the question carefully. Remember the sign. Right, what is at most? I need to also use the right sign. What is at most? It's greater or equals to? Uh -uh. What is at most? Greater or equals to? Uh -uh. What is at most? It's less or less equals to. Yes, you need to know these things. Remember, we spoke about it on Wednesday. Greater, oh sorry, at least means there are more, or I don't know, they can be more, or or that is the number. At most is the opposite of at least, so you've got the two, at least and at most. So if it's not at least, then it should be at most. At most will be less than or equal. So we need to find the Z score for, or because we're calculating the probability, Zx, uh, the mean, sample mean, because the sample mean is what is given in the question, minus the population mean divided by the standard error, which is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So, we need to find the probability that z is 220 minus the mean of 190 divided by the standard deviation of 120 divided by the square root of 50. What is What is the answer? One point seven six seven. One point to two decimal. Uh, one point seven. One point seven seven, right? So now you need to go to the positive side and look for one point seven seven. You go there, and you tell me what is the the answer 
Easy, right? It'd be easy. Easy peasy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, because this one also has no question statement at the top, so it's useless for me to even try and figure out what that is. So, in a sample of 60 schools, 54 reported a decline in the number of absent uh, learners absent calculate the standard error of the proportion so remember also that for the proportion we always use the following right that's what we use so because on this question, they didn't give us the population, but they're asking you to calculate the proportion. So we're going to use the sample proportion. And remember the sample proportion uses your X divided by N. And therefore it means for the sample proportion, uh, standard error will be your P, one minus your P divided by N. Square root of that which is separate to the population proportion if they have given us the population proportion. So first, let's calculate P. What is our X? What is our N? This will be your N because it's your sample. Your X will be the number of schools. So let's calculate 54 divided by 60. What is your P? 0, 0,9. 0, 0,9. Nine. Nine. So then let's go calculate the sample standard error, which will be P, one minus P divided by N. And you just substitute the values 0, 0,9 times one minus 0, 0,9 divided by N. What's it? Zero comma zero three nine. Zero comma zero three The previous study has shown only 71% of the schools in Sikukuni district municipality have reported the decline in the number of learners absent since the start of the learner transport and the school nutrition by the Department of Education. Suppose a sample of 99 schools in Sikukuni municipality is drawn at random. What is the probability that at least 80% of the school is reported a decline. So that is our P, that is our pi, and that is our N. So it means we need to calculate what is at least, by now you know, at least. Greater or equals to. We need to calculate Greater. the probability that they think is greater than equals to our P minus pi divided by the standard error. Now, because we have the population proportion, so we will use the population proportion. So let's substitute. Eighty, which is zero point eight minus zero point seven 
divide by the square root of 0 0.71 times 1 minus 0 0.71 divide by 99. And you must remember that this is greater than, the sign here is greater than. Don't forget to go into your P of less. Oh. When you are done, less than or equals to or less than, you can just say less than the answer that you got. I've got 1.3. The answer there is Eight. 0, 0. Are they different? Yes, um, I got. Um, oh, 0. Point, negative 0. 0.381. Mm -mm. I got 1,97. Yeah, 1,97 is, and then you go onto the table, then from the table it's going to be that 1 minus thing, and then it's 0, 0,97, and then you get the answer of 0, 9,0. 0 yes, it's 9, 0, 0,9756. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. Okay, let's start first with the Z, the pro proportion. What is the Z value or whatever the, the Z value that we are calculating? Actually, why am I still keeping P instead of Z? This should be standardized Z. Uh, what is the Z value that you got? One coin? 1.97. Okay, yeah. so we... Go to the table, one minus the table value, one comma nine seven. So one comma nine and seven is there. Zero comma nine seven five six. Is that what you got? Yes. Yes. Zero comma nine seven five six. Subtract that from one. And then you get zero to double four. <clears throat> you need to zero also pay. Point. Yeah, so it's zero point zero two four four. You need to pay attention to the sign so that you know whether do you need to subtract from one. Or is it the value you find on the table and so on? Okay, so that was the last question on this. Let's see if I have more questions. So some of these questions are almost exactly the same as what we just uh, uh, gone through. Uh, so uh, this is another way of asking the same question. You might have received, some of you might have received the question that looks like this. Which one of the following statement is incorrect with regards to normal distribution? Number A, the Z score has the mean of one, but we know that normal distribution is normally distributed with a mean of zero and the standard deviation of one, that is the property. So this will be the incorrect one. Um, and some of this we have already uh, gone through them. All right, so they are exactly the same. So the smaller the value of your standard deviation, the narrower or the steeper your curve will be. The mean of a normal distribution can take any value in the negative or positive because we know that 
it will be then I really draw my belly curve like that. That in the middle, if it's zero, this side will be negative and this side will be a positive if these are the mean values. So it can take any value of negative or zero or positive value. The area to the right of the mean, we already touched it. So how it's split into half of 0, 0,5 and 0, 0,5 uh, on the left and the right because the sum of all probabilities are equals to 1 and we know that for empirical rule 95% is one standard deviation uh, and 99% oh, come on it's two standard deviation and 99% is three standard deviation and 68% is one standard deviation. We know that, right? So you need to always remember all those things. So let's see if there are more questions. And you need to know how to answer questions or evaluate questions like this, where you are given a statement, you need to make sure that your left is the same as your right to make it correct or incorrect because that's what they are asking you to find. And let's see. Questions like this where they are asking you what is the area to the right? Area to the right will mean greater than or equal um, to the right of a distribution. If it's this, what will be the value of your Z? And this is similar to what we just did previously, right? Because this, they would have said, it's the same as your probability of small Z, because that is the area to the right, will be equals to 0, 0,2061. You need to know and remember that in order for you to find this value, at some point, you said 1 minus some value so that you can get to 0, 0,26. So in order for you to find the Z value, the true Z value, you will need to subtract this value from 1 in order for you to get to that. I will share this as well as the other ones um, on, on my UNISA as well. You need to know how to find the probability if given the mean and the standard deviation by apply you uh, depending on the question so this one is looking for the at most you need to know that at most is less than or equals to and then substitute the values into your formula to calculate the mean of that table or the mean the the probability for that uh, value that you are looking for. Okay, let's go on to see um, the next question. This almost is the same as what we just did, uh, but here they are asking you for the less than, so it means you need to calculate the probability of a less than. So you will have to go and say less than your x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation and the value you find on the table, that will be the probability that you are looking for. Okay, moving on. More other questions. Okay, so this is one of those questions that we didn't answer, remember? I couldn't find the, it said approximately, Let's see this one. There was no statement, so here is the question. So we can do this one together. So it says um, all the other statements. Uh, it's normally distributed with the mean of 114, which is our mean, and the standard deviation of 72. Uh, a consultant has recommended no more than so you need to know what that what does no more than mean in order for you to answer 
the question, what is no more than in a mathematical sign? Less than or equal to. No more than it's less than or equals to. So no more than is less than or equals to. So you need to be able to know those sites. And it says the department would like to ensure that 15.15% of the learners are here to the recommendation. So therefore divide 15.15 by 100 so that we get it to a decimal. And what you need is to find what the Z value is so that we can calculate the probability that Z is no more than, less than or equals to, uh, we're looking for the Z is equals to, 0 0.1515. That's what we're looking. So we need to go to the table. So let's go in and look for 0 0.1515. 0 0.1. Oh, and four, 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 three, four, one, five, one, five. Go out is 0 minus 1. Zero, one, two, three. So probably at the top is three. So it's minus one comma zero three. So we go to the Z here is minus one comma zero three. That's what we got. And X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Everything else it's on the statement. So let's go find. Our answer 1,03 is equals to x uh, is what we are looking for. Did I really? Oh, yes, x is what we are looking for because we don't know, because we don't know how many students adhere to this. Minus our mean is 114. Our standard deviation is 72 and then we can solve for x. So that will be minus 1.03 times 72 and minus becomes positive if we bring minus to the other side, 114 equals to x because we multiply and we move the minus one to the other side. So what is our X? Three nine point eight four. Three nine point eight four. If we estimate it to a whole number minutes, it will be forty, right? So forty minutes. Three nine point eight four, which is approximately forty minutes, will be your answer. And that's how you will find the, the answers. Hmm? So let's see which other question we didn't. I think it was the previous one. OK, no, we don't have to go back there. The, OK, then that would be the next other questions that were cut off. We did answer this question. So this is the same as what we just did. I'm going to go into this. And this is another one. So 
a random sample of 120 um, are drawn at the normally distributed population with the mean of 160. So we know that N is that, the mean of 160, and the standard deviation of 50 determine the standard error. So we need to find the standard error, which is your population standard deviation divided by the square root of N. Which would be 50 divided by the square root of N is 120. What is the answer? Four point five six, four point five six, which is B. Not gonna touch on this. It's the probability of between. We've dealt with the probability of between. Okay, so the others are just as straightforward as the things that we went through right now. So this is also another question. But now you must pay attention to the, the questions. Because we are already in the sampling distribution, so this one, if we need to go find the value of x, it's still going to be the same, 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 same. But because we're dealing with the, we have the mean, the standard deviation and the random sample. So therefore it means the formula would have changed from just, um, so let's let's do it actually, uh, because I just want to demonstrate. Let's do this one. So we have a random sample of 36 learners selected, um, and we are told it's more than, so because it's more than, we know that it's greater than, how do we find this value? Uh, the value of Z. So we're not going to concentrate too much on this X because the X is something that will come later. But we know that they found the probability of Z greater than a value, which is the Z value that we need. And they told us it's 0 0.88449. So we need to find Z. And in order for us to find Z, we need to go find what the probability of 0, 0.88 is. Uh, so do the math. So we go to the table, look for 0, comma, sorry, 0, comma, 1151. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1
divide by the standard deviation of 20, divide by the square root of 36. So let's calculate. Okay, it doesn't matter when I show you the answers. So we need to take minus 1.2 multiply by 20 divide by the square root of 30 and take 80 to the other side it will be plus 80 is equal to Sorry, it's the square root of 36 not 30 36 okay Seventy-six equals to seventy-six. Which is option D. So I'm gonna tell you from here and then we can uh, and it's up to you because remember it's Sunday. We Sunday we go up until six. Then we can look at assignment four, and then on Wednesday we look at our last assignment because Wednesday we have only two hours or one hour ten minutes. I can't even remember, but yeah, we can take a little bit of a break and then come back. It's up to you, or we can stop right here.